We begin this section by answering the question, what is HTML? The short answer is, HTML is the absolute foundation on which the internet as we know today is based. Every web page on the World Wide Web has been developed using HTML, including websites like YouTube, Netflix, and Twitter. Let's take a closer look. What does HTML stand for and what is its role in creating web pages? HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. What does that mean? Hypertext is text that links documents on the internet together through hyperlinks. A simple example of this is Wikipedia. When you visit any Wikipedia article, you'll find a lot of hyperlinks that point to other web pages. Therefore, the term hypertext refers to a system of linking documents on the internet together, allowing the user to jump from one document to another. Moving on to the next term, markup language. To illustrate, let's consider a simple sentence. You play the piano. When we read this sentence, we know it is a question. How do we know that? It is because of the question mark at the end of the sentence. If there were an exclamation mark instead, it would be an exclamation. You play the piano. What I mean to say is, just as humans need punctuation marks to understand written text correctly, the browser needs markup elements to interpret HTML code correctly. These markup elements inform the browser about what should be displayed on the website, such as a heading, an image, simple text, or a link. When we visit a web page on the internet, our browser sends a request to the server. The server responds by sending HTML files to the browser. The browser needs to read and interpret these HTML files to display the website correctly. With HTML code, you determine the elements that make up your web page. What text should be there? What should be the heading? What buttons should be there? And so on. Everything you want to include on your web page is specified with HTML. HTML is essentially the skeleton of the web page. As mentioned earlier, HTML documents usually consist of many markup elements, also known as HTML elements. So let's now take a closer look at what these HTML elements look like. HTML elements generally consist of an opening and a closing tag, with the content of the element in between. The opening tag starts with a less than character, followed by the name of the element, and then a greater than character. The closing tag looks almost the same, except that it includes a slash after the greater than character. The slash signifies that this is a closing tag. This is for example the HTML code for a button. Opening button tag, buy now, closing button tag. And this is how it looks in the browser. There are numerous HTML elements that serve different purposes, such as headings, images, text, sections, forms, and many more. However, you don't need to memorize them all. Throughout this course, you will learn a lot of HTML elements that are relevant to you as an aspiring web developer. Now that we have clarified what HTML is, let's finally move on to the practical part. In the next lesson, we will create our first simple web page using HTML. In this lesson, we will create a simple web page using HTML. As you learned in the previous lesson, HTML is basically text. So, to create a web page, first we need a text file. For simplicity, I'll create it on the desktop. Right click, New, Text Document. I'll name this file My Website, but feel free to choose a different name if you prefer. This file will contain the code for our website. Now let's open this file with the Windows Text Editor. Here we can write text. For example, Hello World. That's all we want our website to say right now. Now let's save this file using Ctrl S or File Save. This file is a text file. We can see that by the file extension, which is .txt. I want this file to become an HTML page, so we have to change the file extension to .html. If you don't see the .txt extension, you need to make file extensions visible in your file explorer. To do that, you go to your file explorer and select View. Make sure this checkbox next to File Name Extension is checked. Once you have done that, you should see file extensions for all your files. I recommend keeping this option enabled so you always know the type of file you're working with. Now let's turn our file into an HTML file. For that, we have to rename the file. Right click, rename. And change the extension from .txt to .html. This way the computer knows that this is an HTML file. We can see the icon has changed. In my case, the Chrome logo appeared because this is now an HTML web page and Chrome is my default browser.
If you have a different default browser, such as Firefox, you might see the Firefox logo. But it doesn't matter which browser you use, it will work the same way. Now we can open this file by double clicking on it. This should automatically open the file in the browser. We can see that the browser opens a completely blank web page. In the top left corner, we have the text Hello World, which is what I wrote initially in the text file. So hopefully you understand that websites are just basic text files that the browser interprets. This text is simply taken as is and displayed on the web page. The web page is stored locally on the computer. It is not on the internet. You can tell because the address in the address bar points to a location on the computer. In my case, it points to the desktop. If it were on the internet, there would be a web address, like www and so on. So far, the web page only contains Hello World. Now, how can we add elements like headings or buttons to this web page? For that, you need to write your markup elements that should appear on the web page. So let's open our file again. Right click, open with Notepad, or simply Editor. If Notepad is not listed here, you may need to click on Choose another app and scroll until you find the editor. To have both visible, the browser and the editor at the same time, I will attach the editor to the left side and the browser to the right side. If I write normal text in here, for example, welcome to my website, this text will be displayed on the web page as is. To see the change, I just have to save the file, Control S, and refresh the page in the browser. This means that the browser will read this file again and interpret the HTML code. Now it says, welcome to my website. You probably remember that HTML is a text-based markup language. Normal text like welcome to my website is simply taken as is. It shows on the website just like that. In the last lesson, I mentioned that HTML documents consist of markup elements. With these markup elements, you tell the browser what should be displayed on the page, such as links to other web pages, buttons, headings, images, and many more. Now let's put everything into practice by creating our first elements on this website. We want to display a button on the web page. For that, we create an HTML element for a button. An HTML element consists of an opening and closing tag. We write less than button greater than. This is the opening tag. Now I can write the content of the button, play. Finally, you add the closing tag. This is the same as the opening tag, but with a slash symbol. So less than slash button greater than. I'll save it again with Ctrl S and refresh the page in the browser. On the web page, we now see the new HTML element, the button with the text play. Clicking on this button doesn't do anything because, as I mentioned before, with HTML, you only determine which elements should appear on the website. If you want to trigger a reaction to this button click, you would need to program this using JavaScript. In summary, to create special elements like buttons in HTML, you need tags. There's an opening tag, the content, and the closing tag. The tag name determines the HTML element. In this case, it is a button. Let's talk about another HTML element, headings. If you want to create a heading in HTML, you would use the h1 tag. Opening h1 tag, this is a heading, closing h1 tag. Save it and refresh the page. We can see the heading, this is a heading. In HTML, headings follow a ranking order indicated by the number after the h. Here we have an h1 heading, which is the highest and most important heading. But there's also h2, h3, h4, h5, and h6. These headings become progressively smaller. These are considered subheadings. Generally, you would only have one h1 heading on each page. This is your title. And then the other headings are used as subheadings to structure your text. These headings play also an important role in search engine optimization, SEO. They determine under which keywords your website can be found by search engines like Google. We will discuss SEO in more detail in later sections. Let's continue with HTML. At the beginning of this lesson, I mentioned that you can write plain text without any tags. While that is true, for the sake of clarity, I would advise against it. It is better to represent every element using HTML elements. If you just want to write normal text, I recommend using the P tag. P stands for paragraph. If I use a P tag and write some text, this text will appear as normal text on the website. If I create another P tag by copying the previous one, 
we can see that there is a line break between these two texts, because each of these texts is within its own paragraph. To help you learn how to use these different tags, I have prepared a small exercise. I want you to recreate this web page using the HTML elements that you have learned in this lesson. Try to figure out which HTML elements are used here and write the HTML code for this page. So at this point, you should pause the video and try to recreate this web page. The solution code will be shown in five seconds. I hope you gave it a try. Here is the code for comparison. To create the main heading at the top, we used the h1 tag. Between the opening and closing tags, we wrote, Welcome to my web page. Next, we have the subheadings HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Each language is therefore an h2 tag. After each subheading, we have a short explanation for the language. This explanation is basic text inside a text paragraph, so we use the p tag. Finally, there is a button with the content Learn more at the end of each section. If your code looks something like this, congratulations! You now know how to create HTML elements. Welcome back! In this lesson, we'll dive a bit deeper into HTML tags. You will learn about a special type of tag and also explore HTML attributes and how they can be used to modify HTML elements. As you learned in the previous lessons, tags are used to create HTML elements. Normally, we have an opening tag, the content of the HTML element, and then the closing tag. The reason why we have this complex looking syntax with an opening and a closing tag is so that we always know where the element starts and where it ends. As we have seen with these paragraphs, the content of an HTML element can get very long, but there are also HTML elements that do not have any content at all. Therefore, they don't need a closing tag. These elements are called self-closing tags. The first self-closing tag you should know of is the BR tag. It creates a line break on your page. Self-closing tags start with a less than character, then the element name, and then slash greater than. Let's place the BR tag inside a text paragraph and see what happens. Save the file and reload the page. And we see we created a line break exactly where we put the BR tag. If you place it between two paragraphs, the BR tag will create an extra gap between these two paragraphs just like you would expect in any writing program like Microsoft Word. To make it more noticeable, we can also use multiple line breaks and create a bigger gap. When working with self-closing tags, it is also possible to just leave out the slash and write it like an opening HTML tag. This will work the same way, but it is better practice to include the slash so everyone knows that this is supposed to be a self-closing tag. It is easier to read and will become more important when you become a professional JavaScript developer and work with frameworks like React, where you have to use a slash. So it's better to get used to it right from the start. Another self-closing tag is the HR tag. The HR tag creates a horizontal line on your page. It can be used to visually separate content on the page. It sort of indicates the beginning of a new part of the website. A very complex and interesting self-closing tag is input. An input element is a field where the user can enter text. This will allow you to collect user information later. The input element is a very complex HTML element because there are so many different input types. These can go from simple types like text, number, and checkbox to more complex ones like date and time picker, color picker, or even a file upload. We will discuss all of these types in the advanced HTML section of this course. But for now, you should know how to actually change this normal input element to a different kind of input element. This is where HTML attributes come into play. With HTML attributes, you can modify properties of HTML elements or provide additional information to the elements. Let's see how this works. An attribute is written inside the opening tag of an HTML element. You place the cursor after the tag name and add a space. Input elements have a type attribute. Type. To assign a value to this attribute, you write an equal sign and specify the value in quotation marks. For example, the value of this type could be number. So we have an input element where the type equals number. Let's save this and refresh the page. By changing the type to number, we have transformed the input field to a number field. From now on, you can only enter numbers into this input field. If you try to enter text, nothing will happen only numbers are allowed. We also have these arrows to increase and decrease the number. 
So remember, HTML attributes are used to modify HTML elements. For input fields, there's also the placeholder attribute. It allows you to provide a hint about the purpose of this input field. In this case, we could write, for example, enter your age. Again, we wrote it the same way. First, the attribute name, placeholder, equals, and in quotation marks, enter your age. If we save and refresh, we will see the hint enter your age inside the input field. This is how tags and attributes work. And there you go. You learned the basics of HTML. Now it's time to dive deeper and learn more advanced concepts. Check out the first link in the description to get the full course on Udemy.